Well, good afternoon or good morning wherever you are in the world. My name is Craig Parry and today is a very special day and a very special webinar. I will be discussing everything about creativity and how my three mindsets have changed my career as a photographer. So let's kick it off. Okay, so unlocking your photographic um, creativity is, has, for me is a very special subject because it just doesn't affect a water photographer, it doesn't affect a landscape photographer, it affects everybody. Everybody, these three mindsets affect anybody's career, uh, anybody's lives, and I want to talk to you today how important they are and how you can overcome these mindsets that people have. And it's, um, yeah, so it's going to be an exciting little discussion today. And at the end of today's talk, I will have um, some questions. You can ask some questions and I'll try and get to most of them, but we'll see how we go. All right, let's kick this off. So... First of all, I want to talk about my journey, okay, where I've come from and how my mindsets have, have played a big role in my career. Um, and then the three key mindsets, which I'll discuss in a minute. My favorite mindset is the last one, and I'll be given also a, a low pro bag uh, at the end as well, valued at $400, and I'll also be giving you the opportunity to become a founding member in my masterclass. And I'll talk to you more about that at the end. So, who is this webinar for? Like I said at the start, it's for everybody, but most of you are on here because you want to learn about photography and you want to learn how to overcome these thoughts that you have and the thoughts of other people to make you a more efficient and more productive photographer and more creative photographer. Okay, so who am I? Well, most of you might know who I am. Um, so my name's Craig. I grew up in Northern New South Wales, Australia, and it's been 25 years now since I took up being a professional photographer. I started off taking photos of my friends surfing and selling them to Coastal Watch. Um, started doing weddings and it sort of just sort of snowballed from there. I, I think when I was about 18, I said to myself, you know, this is a career I want to go. This is, this is my passion is in photography. I love it. There's something about it. There's a fire in my belly. I just want to be good at it. I just want to be successful at it. And, um, and it sort of happened with hard work. Uh, it's been a really challenging career as which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, you know, coming from uh, the country makes it a little bit harder for a, a professional photographer to make a, make a footprint in the industry, but it's been enjoyable and I've really, I've, you know, my self growth has been um, exceptional. So from there, from my sort of late teens, I took on a finance position. Um, and to tell you the truth, I hated it. <laughs> I, it was, the driving force in my um, decision to go down uh, the photography career path. You know, I felt, you know, I just want to be a photographer. I want to be traveling. I want to take photos of nature. I want to be taking images that are inspiring people. Um, and, and it happened. I, I, in 2009, I made the decision to open up my first gallery. I had $5,000 in the bank and my back was against the wall. I didn't know if I was going to succeed or not, but it happened. I, 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 I without the support from my family, it, it, it happened, which is fantastic. By 2014, I closed the gallery with $5,000 in my bank account and decided that I wanted to travel the world again and take photos of, of large animals underwater. And, um, and it, it, things just presented themselves and it was a fantastic opportunity. And I, I got some amazing photos and it's just from there, I think when people ask me, you know, what was a defining moment in my career? And I think 2014 was. In 2014, I got some remarkable images of humpback whales in Tonga. I won International Landscape Photo of the Year. Um, what else? Jeez, uh, Underwater Photo of the Year. I met my beautiful wife. Um, so that was... If you're going to build a house in photography, that was the foundation. And that was, you know, the driving force and 
I think that's been the catalyst for my career today, being able to do that. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, you know, I, I've, I'm going to talk obviously a bit more about myself because I want to use myself as a, a guinea pig for you guys to understand these three key, key mindsets that have made who I am today. So I can sort of express to you that it is possible to overcome these mindsets. And I want to kick it off with, um, I, you know, I, being uncomfortable, you know, being uncomfortable with getting outside your comfort zone. All right. So here we go. And we've all been there. Um, you're doing all the right things. You probably, you know, you've got the gear. You've, you've been out there shooting regularly. You know, you're building a portfolio. You're actively searching for that magic shot. Um, you know, you, you've been stuck in habit. You lack the confidence, you know, and you get the pre-shoot anxiety, which is, you know, pretty uncomfortable. You know, I've, I get it all the time. Don't worry. So I want to help you fix it. And let's dive into this um, three-piece learning seminar. So expand your comfort zone. Now, this is huge for me. Expanding my comfort zone is a milestone in the growth of me as a person and me in my career, okay? So the fear of failure hits. You're not sure how to approach the shoot. You're uncomfortable with the environment, freezing cold conditions. You know, it's rough, it's stormy. How am I going to get the shot? Am I going to freeze to death, okay? So the good news is it's the best, you're, you're expanding your comfort zone is the most amazing feeling and it's very liberating, okay? So that will promote self-growth um, as new photos present themselves and experiences and innovation and originality shine. You know, I, I have created some of my best work outside my comfort zone. All right, here's a new way forward. Here we go. So... Instead of seeing challenges as threats, seeing, seeing them as opportunities, you know, that's a big thing. Like to look, just reframe that mindset. You know, this is going to be not hard. This is a new opportunity for me to grow and me to create something really special. Plan the shoot and set small but achievable goals. And that's really important. Don't overcomplicate things by setting unrealistic goals before you go into a production shoot or into just a, even if you're traveling the world and you go, oh, you know, I saw this image and, and really deep down, you know, you're pushing yourself too hard. Don't do that. Try and keep them reasonable. Uh, now seek out, this is a big thing for me as a professional photographer working for National Geographic. Seek out friends, seek out your peers, seek out scientists, pe seek out people that know more than you about the subject you're about to shoot. That's, that's a really good way of feeling comfortable and feeling that you're in control of, of the situation, okay? Now, these are my ex personal experiences and most of my biggest achievements in my life have been outside my comfort zone. I've, I would have to say 90% of my best career moments, I've felt super uncomfortable. And here are four examples of when I felt uncomfortable, all right? So when I was shooting Chris Hemsworth in Limitless, there was so much pressure. It was my first really big gig with National Geographic. I was on set. I had key art to produce. I had a set of images I had to re you know, produce each day. And it was in Norway. The first shoot we did was in Norway. It was freezing cold. It was minus 15, you know, coming from... This area near Byron Bay, it, it's, you know, the coldest it gets is like 15 degrees Celsius and the water is, you know, the coldest is probably 18 degrees. And over there, the water was six degrees. And when we shot one of his swimming sequences, it was six degrees. So it, that was incredibly uh, humbling for me and, and incredibly um, uncomfortable. But I tell you what, I am so... Uh, privilege to get the photos I got, you know, um, under pressure, it worked really well. And I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with that. So the next one, Shark Beach. So that was sort of Shark Beach happened within the same time as the filming for Limitless. So uh, Chris and I went down to 
Coffs Harbour and we, we dove with a few sharks down there and I was a freediver so scuba was something that I'd done previously but I really like freediving but on this dive we had to sort of get down to that 20 metre mark and and it is uncomfortable because you've got to share the shot with the video videographers and you know that was a challenge as well because you haven't really got much time so you've got to get in there the pressure's on and you've got to feel like you can do it and you've got to believe you can do it okay Opening my first gallery in 2009, well, that was outside my comfort zone. I was told it's not going to work, Craig. It's the GFC, general, um, the global financial crisis. No one's going to buy any of your prints. Um, and I didn't listen to that. You know, I, I, took a, I took a chance. I felt it was right in my stomach that I should do it, so I did it. Secret Life of Octopus. Now, you might have seen some advertising of that at the moment um, being released on Earth Day this year. Working with James Cameron and the team from Sea Light Pictures and Alex, it was a wonderful production. So that was another outside my comfort zone. And to tell you the truth, I've never shot octopus before until this show. And now I love them. And now I love shooting octopus. Macro photography was never a big thing for me either. So I had to sort of adapt to that. And I picked it up straight away. And I felt uncomfortable, but gee whiz, I, am, I was, I'm so proud of the set of images, which I'll be releasing in the next few months. All right, <clears throat> so the results, a huge sense of achievement, expanding my comfort zone. I now approach challenges and, and you know, the thoughts of an achievement you know, are rather than fear. And having established a gallery in Lennox Head for 10 plus years you know, made me a photographer I am today. Without my gallery, I don't think... I would have been, I would have had my, I don't think I would have had my footprint in the industry like I have. And without taking risks and feeling uncomfortable, I would never have started with National Geographic, guaranteed. There's no doubt. If I would have said to myself, I can't do this, it's too hard, you know, there's no way I would have ever taken any chance to get any good photos in my life. So it's super important to feel a little bit uncomfortable. All right. Second secret photographer's block okay this is huge i get it all the time all the time i feel it's when i get photographer's block it's my brain telling me i have to set back and and relax and and do something different for a little while you get a lack of inspiration you feel burnt out overwhelmed you can't seem to get that magic image anymore get it all the time don't worry the good news is it's normal Every artist feels this at some stage, there is, and, but there are ways to overcome these feelings, and here they are. Don't overcomplicate things. You know, I find it really refreshing to travel with less gear. So if I'm going on a photo shoot and I've got 10 lenses and two bodies and I'm just like, what lens am I going to use? It really plays its toll on me. So I try and simplify what I've got in my bag. That's a big thing. The other thing is to get out, you know, get out and get into nature, you know, go for a walk, go, um, you know, just see the world, put the camera away for a little while, you know, reset. I go camping, I'll go for a surf. Um, and then surrender yourself to the inspiration. You know, you've got to, there's, there's sources of inspiration, you know, there's, um, you know, visit a gallery. I, I'm constantly, when I'm traveling, visiting galleries and, and seeing new things and, and being inspired by other artists. All those things there play an essential role in, in sort of vanishing that photographer's block. My personal experience, leave the camera at home, like I said, go for a surf, spend time with the family. The other thing is too, if you're feeling like you need to have some direction like you cannot get the shot a mood board or a storyboard is super super helpful you just jump online google a set of images that you feel that relates to what you want to do color palette and then just sort of get those and put them together and and that'll give you some direction research is a big one i research other artists i listen to their podcasts I watch documentaries, whether it's documentaries on animals or photographers or artists. That's another way. And also learn. Learn my new masterclass, which I'll be talking about later. Um, 
the results, you know, taking a break increased my passion for photography. It's super important to take a break and reset, okay? Otherwise, you'll burn out. And by creating a mood and storyboard, my direction and productivity is tenfold. It increased so much. And I'll give you an example at the end here. Understanding the flow of creativity allows me to surrender to the process. Don't hold. If you feel like you've got that block, let it go. Understand that that's just the way it is. And you need to, don't just give, you, don't give yourself a hard time, all right? So this is the magic of a storyboard or a mood board. Now, back in 2019, I got some direction from National Geographic for Shark Beach. And Brian, who's one of the photo editors there, said to me, Craig, I just need this photo of Chris on his surfboard with a shark underneath him. I'm like, well, mate, I don't think I'm going to get the shark underneath him, but... I can get Chris on the board for your key art. So a part of key art with National Geographic is that you'll give them a set of images and they create a composite. Now, I got this one image of Chris on a board and I had one image of a shark and they made this composite. And this is the storyboard here. This is what the direction I was given and that is the result. I was so, so proud of the result that came through and how it all panned out. It's amazing to see a vision or a, or a thought or, a, or, or a, some guidance that you can have and what it can create later down the line. It's amazing. It's amazing what your brain can do. That whole um, thought process and manifesting you know, images that you want to create. All throughout my life, Man manifesting images and seeing them come to fruition on a regular basis is a pretty special thing. Imposter syndrome. Now, this is my favorite one. This is the last one of the three. And in the last six months, personally, it's been huge for me. Like it is, it's that whole self-doubt. Am I good enough? Am I good enough to do this? You know, am I, am I, do I have the experience? All right. So here we go. This is, this is, this is a good one. So I, I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't have the skills. Maybe my old work looks better. The work of my peers is better than mine. That's a big one. Social media, hello. <laughs> or maybe I should look at a plan B. Maybe photography isn't for me. The good news is imposter syndrome is normal and very, very healthy. Would you believe it? It's healthy. Self-doubt can be a source of growth. Okay, it's so healthy to have imposter syndrome because I feel when you have self-doubt, it makes you dig deeper inside of yourself and see the good. You can beat the feeling by expanding your comfort zone, which we talked about earlier, and it's very common amongst high achievers. So if you're feeling it, you're a high achiever. Here's the new way forward. Acknowledge your achievements. It's so important to look back on what you've achieved in life and see that you're worthy, you've done a great job, you know, this is, this is a career that I'm going to be good at. What I'm going through now is just a phase and I, I, I've, I've won that award, I've, I've, I've taken that photo, you know, I've inspired those people. Also, change negative self, you know, when you're thinking negatively. It's, it's, it's so easy to go into those sort of mindsets where you're, you know, I'm not good enough, you know, I... You know, I, I've had such a bad day. I haven't taken a good photo in six months. Also, ex, you know, embracing a healthy level of perfectionism is really important and, and activating goals. It's, it's good to feel good about yourself. Don't be ashamed of not doing that, okay? So feel good about yourself. You are good and you're going to create amazing things. This is my personal experience about um, imposter syndrome. I've employed a business coach to make me have direction. You know, I'm, I've employed a business coach to allow me to guide all my history, all my experiences into a perfect masterclass. I listen to podcasts on a regular basis. I listen to books. I read books. I go for a surf. I'll go for a run. You know, I'll do something that's something that's going to make me feel good about myself, you know, to get those endorphins running, to get, to get that serotonin pumping again. 
watch the sunrise, watch the sunset, all those wonderful things, spend time with the family. Um, now, I look back um, at what I've achieved and, and, and you know, I, I think about great things that I've, I've achieved in the past. I always look back and go, wow, look at the things I've done in my life. You know, I've won that award. I've created that. I've, you know, I'm Sony ambassador. I've worked for National Geographic. So it's nice to reflect on those things and break out of that negative mindset. So like I said, my results are that I've employed and I've got a coach to help me create this masterclass that I'll be talking to you about in a minute. Um, I exercise and I meditate on a regular basis. It's super important to get your body moving, to relax, you know, to see some sun, get out there. I love getting out in the morning. I just sit on my surfboard and I close my eyes and, and I have the sun hitting my face. You know, it's just a beautiful way to start the day. Um, one of the biggest, uh, I guess, influences in my life was back in 2009 when I didn't have... I didn't feel like I had the courage, you know, I didn't feel like I was good enough to open up my first gallery. And Robert Sharma, Robin Sharma had a great book called The Leader Who Had, no, you know, had no title. And that book there um, allowed me to sort of reflect and say, you know, when I'm 80 years old and I'm on my deathbed or 90 years old, I, may, I hope it's 100, um, and reflect on my life, how am I going to see myself at that period of my time? Am I gonna regret not becoming the man I am today as a photographer, as a opening the gallery? What have I got to lose? You know, what I've, there's nothing to lose. The only thing to lose is $5,000, who cares? You know, like it's, it's, it's a risk that I was prepared to take and I, and I encourage everyone out there, if you have a dream, follow it. I know it's hard sometimes, but it's, it's really easy to quit and I feel if you just take one step at a time, you can be that person. All right, now to the exciting stuff. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. Um, I'm releasing my masterclass today. And my masterclass will be released, the full masterclass will be released on the 30th of April. But I'm giving my subscribers the opportunity and you to have the founding member, become a founding member, um, it's 50% off. The course is going to go through everything from landscape photography to uh, aerial photography to how to run an exhibition, how to print your work, how to goal set, how to get, and I'll be going into more um, information on, on these three mindsets and more. Um, I'll be also giving uh, four real world assignments on on uh, after each lesson, I'll give you an assignment to do and I'll help you critique those assignments. I'll give you a 15 minute phone call on Zoom and we can go through your images, um, which I think is super important as the, as, the, as the teacher to have that one-on-one -on -one experience is, is, is um, priceless for students. Over the last 15 years teaching photography, Having that one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction is is so valuable, and it's a even though it's fifteen minutes, it's, it's um, can be life changing. I'll be there to support you guys. There'll be a private forum um, for each um, member as well, so we'll all go in there. You'll be with like-minded people um, that love photography, that want to learn. I'll be in there um, talking to everyone, so don't feel like I'm not going to be there. And uh, I'm I'm excited about it. I think um, this is one career move that I've done that I felt is as good or even better than working for National Geographic. I love being an educator. I love teaching people. So um, yeah, I, I hope you can join me. It's There's no risk once you sign up. If you don't feel like you've learned anything after 30th of April, I'll give you money back. There's no problem with that, okay? But I guarantee, I believe in my product, I believe in my skill set, and I believe in my teaching technique that's proven for me, it's can be proven for you as well. So I hope you can join me. So I'm going to choose somebody today uh, to win a Low Pro backpack. Low Pro has been amazing to support us um, on this webinar. They've actually given me four extra bags to give away for the first subscribers of my course. So getting quick, you got <laughs> four bags to give away there. I think they're valued at $400 each. So if you 
If you're one of the four people to buy my course, um, it's 50% off, that's thousand US dollars, then um, you, you'll be getting a bag as well. So today's uh, $400 bag, I will put a little live, I'll put a video, I pre-recorded a video up after today's seminar for the, of the winner. Um, it's a Pro Tactic 450 AW Series 2 bag worth around $400. It's my go-to go backpack. It's just over here, this little baby. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a beauty. And thanks, Lopro, for your support. It's been amazing. And Sony as well. You guys have been fantastic. So we're going to go into a Q&A session now. Um, has anybody got any questions? And this is, this is going to be... Um, Challenging for me because I'm running two two screens here. Um, I'm gonna try and do this for you guys. It's let me just pull this down and um, see if I can get some um, questions rolling along here. All right. This is funny, isn't it? I'm just trying to. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on, questions, guys, I need some questions. How did I take that leap to opening the gallery? Um, geez, it's, it honestly felt like I was jumping off a cliff. <laughs> it, it, I had my back against the wall. It was, um, I had no money left. I had my family to support me, which is fantastic. Mum used to come in and look after the gallery while I was out shooting. And but, you know, I I didn't I didn't think I could fail. I thought there's no plan B. I'm going to do this. I'm going to open up a gallery and I'm going to pursue photography for the rest of my life. I didn't have that many good images, to be honest. I look back at my images and I'm like, you know, they're not that good. <laughs> you know, there was a couple of good ones, but. I had the support from my local community too, which is pretty amazing. But I think putting myself out there with my back against the wall in the public eye forced me to excel. It forced me to be a better photographer. Okay, so what else have we got here? How do you deal with freezing conditions? <laughs> um, it's surprise can, the, the the equipment actually works really well these days. Uh, my I was shooting limitless in Norway and I was in Antarctica with my Sony A1 and that was in my water housing. What I tried to do I before I went out to do the photo shoot I would just make sure that the camera was you know inside somewhere warm. I'd wrap it up in one of my jackets as well, just to keep keep its own sort of temperature going. Um, but the most, you know, I think my drone battery struggled a little bit. You know, they they struggled, but I think I struggled the most. I think my camera equipment <laughs> did a better job than me. Um, I'm still using the iPhone at this stage. Um, when I start looking, when I start, uh, you know. Uh, any, any advice of buying your first camera and lens? Yes, don't get something that's going to cost you the earth. I suggest getting something used, but make sure that it's not broken. Get a friend that's experienced with cameras and and um, get them to help you purchase um, that, that camera or that lens. Um, it's nice to also have interchangeable lenses, you know, to buy a body that you can change lenses so you can have that opportunity to to get a image that you can zoom in if you got to you know go traveling go to Africa you want to have that zoom so you can get that animal shot and if you want to do that landscape as well you got that wider focal length as well say around 16 mil all right um, how much is too much when buying gear all right how much is too much well it depends on how much you have <laughs> Damien but uh demo but um mate I would Say, if you're starting out as a photographer, try and sit around that $1,000 mark. Don't go any higher, honestly. Like I think um, it's stepping stones and once you learn the fundamentals of photography and get out there and, and push yourself a little bit more, then you can decide to go a little bit harder on your, on your costs. Um, all right, one more question. 
When did you start to expand from an amateur to get exposure in your journey to professionalism? Well, my biggest, I think, what helped me the most was photography competitions. I entered every competition. I got knocked down on my butt hundreds of times, didn't win competitions, and I felt like that was one of my key once once i started going into the finals in competitions then i felt like i was on the right road you know i was i was there and i i, I could and getting critiqued by other professionals was a big thing as well um yeah either way i mean expanding your portfolio as well you know getting doing different things you know you might like landscape photography but geez give it a go give give water photography a go give drone photography a go give Give portraits a go. I think I can um, reflect back on my career and a lot of my biggest achievements have been a collection of my skill set over the last 25 years. I feel doing the weddings that I used to do, doing the family portraits, doing the surf photography, doing the drone photography, I can go now on production with National Geographic and go... I can get that shot. Yes, I can get that shot. I can take that portrait. I know how to set up my off-camera flashes to get that beautiful portrait, to get that key art. And it's so beautiful to be able to recall those techniques, those skill sets to, to show off. <laughs> you know, it's, it's lovely. They're like, oh my God, can you drone as well? Can you, can you take a split shot? So all those things are fantastic to sort of expand in your, your professional, professionalism. Um, all right, so I'll take one more question. What is the most challenging photo shoot you've ever been on? Wow. Good question, Ronnie. I would have to say the most challenging photo shoot was Secret Life of the Octopus. Yep. That was the most challenging. I had James Cameron sitting as director for that show and he's like one of the biggest directors in the world i was working with a very talented team of videographers um i was working with amazing scientists and i feel that was probably the most challenging because i had to push myself outside my comfort zone so many times i had to dive down on scuba for 20 meter you know for 20 meters for you know an hour and come up and do that three times a day um you know, I had COVID at the start of the shoot. So I was diving just after I had COVID, which is always a high risk. I was getting a little bit of vertigo under the water um, and dealing with octopus in, in muck is, is a challenge. One little movement from your flipper can wreck the entire shoot. So you gotta be, I had to be really careful with that. And um, yeah, I think that was my toughest one, but my most rewarding, the content I got and the assets I got from from that particular show, um, I'm super proud of. And I didn't have any helpers, I didn't have any assistants. I did it all by myself. Um, when it came to the day, I had to get some photos of Alex. We went out in the boat and um, I didn't use flash. I got in the water with her. She stuck her head out of the water with her goggles on in a really calm, glassy conditions. And I snapped this most amazing portrait. And we still, Alex, I sent it to her the other day. I said, Alex, how good is this shot? You know, like. What a beautiful photo. So yeah, most rewarding, most difficult, but um, I, I, I'm stoked with it all. So everything, yeah, went really well. I wanna thank everyone for today. I am humbled and I feel grateful that you've all come here to listen to me today and learn a little bit about the psychology of being an artist and how tough it can be, but how easy it is to sort of get out of those mindsets and become a better photographer. So if you want to watch this again, I'm going to, I've, pre, I've recorded this whole version. So I'm going to, after we knock off today, I'm going to go through and, and edit this video and put it back up and send it out to you tonight. Um, and what else? And I want to draw that bag as well. So I'll be looking at uh, all the emails, everyone that turned up today and, and I'll send that bag out to you. Um, once again, thank you. This is my course, 
I'm going to be so proud to release it on the 30th of April. I'm actually off to Dubai on Sunday to run a photo talk in front of thousands of people for Exposure, which is a, a photography conference. One of the, It's actually the world's biggest photography conference. I'll be on their X stage talking about wildlife photography. So I'm going to record that as well and be able, I'm going to share that to everyone. I um, also had the opportunity in Dubai to have a 16-piece um, um, exhibition. And a part of that exhibition I'll be recording and that'll be a part of my masterclass on how to run an exhibition. It's going to be a very special addition to my masterclass because it's going to be exotic. It's going to be in Dubai. Um, it's going to be 16 of my black and white pieces that um, will be selling for over 9,000 US dollars each, which I have never thought of doing before at that price, but it's going to be uh, a little bit special to see my work up in Dubai um, and being viewed via, via so many people and, and having that experience. So once again, thank you so much and I am signing off and I appreciate today and all of you there. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.